Amazing. LV46. Thanks, Jeff. Congratulations on the bits of the film that we saw anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you're entering into another world. Um, you're recreating another world, and you've done this before. I'm just mm -hmm. wondering if we could talk about both the opportunities and the pressure of bringing audiences back to a place where they've been before. Um, I, I really do it all for myself, i got to be honest. I mean, I, I'm a fan of these movies. I'm a fan of Alien. You, 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 when you love it, there's usually you, there's a movie you're waiting for Hollywood to do, right? Like, I hope they, at some point, they, they go back to this. And it happens with many franchises that you love, that you go like, I hope they will take it back to this, or they'll go in that, this or that route. So one day when someone asked me, like, what would you do if you do it? I was like, oh, I have ideas. <laughs> and I could have probably laid out the whole thing of what I want to do. And I was lucky enough that Ridley Scott agreed with me and was like, sure, then you should go and do it. But if you can talk uh, about the dynamic chance. of that, that, there's a challenge with it because yeah. on the one hand, you're sort of treading over that, but you need it to be your own. There's there's yeah. a, there's a challenging dynamic there. I'm just wondering if you could talk about navigating that fan yeah. expectations people talk about, what people think an alien movie should be. All but that's the stuff. thing, that, that's the, the, there's no, there's no, there's no one uh, alien fan that agrees on everything. I learned with Evil Dead, there's no, some people think Evil Dead is comedy and it's Evil Dead 2, and some people think no, Evil Dead is straight-faced horror, you know, boss the wall horror like in the first one. And, and you know, there, there's different kind of fans, and with aliens, same. The only one that I know really, really well is myself, <laughs> and uh, and and I get at the same time. It's the beauty of this movie is that most of the alien movies you watch them and then you go with friends and debate about it. And if you really love them, you really debate. And if you didn't, sometimes you hate them and you you go at each other thinking why you're wrong, why I'm right about what the movie is good or not. And I think that that's what uh, true fandom is. There's a it's, it's not you love them all. That's not really the thing. You. It's, a, it's more complex than that. So for me, as long as I, I, I'm, I will never get involved in any in any franchise that I don't truly love. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I'll feel like, what am I doing here? Like pretending I know what this is. Like I just goes into the ones that I really love, and I can go into a real conversation with someone about it, and that tells me that I probably, if I follow what I want to see, if I follow my heart about what it truly the movie needs to be, I would probably there will be a lot of people that agree with me. And let's talk about you being on set and seeing a Giger-like creation emerging from the wall, the flickering lights, yeah. the, the grungy look. Clearly this is going back to an aesthetic of Ridley's original, yeah. um, but very much your own. Talk about, again, that fine line between doing something that's not strictly homage, but certainly recognizing where yeah. the stuff had come from. Well, you know, I mean, most, most of the time I'm, I'm behind the Povertino when you say the cocoon. I wish I was outside looking at it, but I'm the one pushing the head of the Xenomorph <laughs> through the cocoon. I actually, I actually almost fell out of it, which would have been the most hilarious, like, B-roll shot of the director just coming through the cocoon Co out of the wall. Covered in KY jelly. Yeah, it's still KY, KY jelly, jelly, I have to ask. Yeah, it is, absolutely. <laughs> It would be it would have been incredible, but um, the um, T cellular. <laughs> I think, uh, look, it's it, it, it. You feel very lucky when you're there, and you'll be able to see all that, right, and see that world coming alive. Um, to see the designs are so mythological that that, in, and for me, it's like the gospel, right? All these texts, you know, these other movies. So the God, so that's why the canon is so important for me as well, because I I, I wouldn't mess with it or change it just for the sake of it. I'm really trying to be as faithful as I can to, to what the other movies d did. But I have to always keep in mind, and discover that with Evil Dead, my first film, that there's a whole audience that comes in and they don't even know these others. Right. You know, like, when I went to say, I remember, I don't know, watching The Fly when I was a kid and going like, wow, this is amazing. And my dad goes, oh, it's just a remake. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this movie is incredible. And, and uh, well, there's always one in 1940-something. Yeah, sure, well, right. But but it would be unfair. I think I think it has happened too much with some franchises. It's a bit unfair to the new audiences that if you, if you haven't seen all of them, you know, you don't understand chapter 8, you know, 7, 9. And, and, and you know, characters walk in and half of the audience goes like, whoa, and the other half goes like, well, I'm supposed to know who that person is? It's just unfair, it doesn't work, I think. For me, I, I want to make sure that um, I do it in a way that if you haven't seen any of the films, you, you get a, you have a blast, and you can go tell someone, I've seen this movie, and someone's going to tell, oh, but this 
Ridley's is so much better, which is true, but but the young audience goes like, sure, whatever. This is this is my movie. And again, I imagine I someone that, that haven't seen none of them and sits two hours of all those ideas packed in two hours for the first time in their life. I'm jealous. I have to sneak in before they cut us off, but you talk about a young audience. This is a young crew. Yeah. I felt very old watching this crew run around <laughs> and get murdered. Um, I'm wondering if we could talk about bringing this ensemble together very briefly. Yeah. Um, I think it was it was all about you always want to do something that hasn't been done before, right? Like when it comes to the, the franchise, you want to find your subgenre. Like you know, Fincher is a prison movie, and, and Cameron's is a it's a war movie. Uh, you need to find that, and on the heist, kind of there's a there's a DNA of high, heist movie in ours. That we'll find that first, and then um, the group of you know all you know professionals in space, the space truckers of it all had been done, and Covenant did it not too long ago. So I felt like we got to do something different. And, and and let's agree that for horror, in general, the rule of thumb is the older the person, you know, the, it's not that bad to see them die. You know, he has 88 years old, eh, he lived a good life. <laughs> now, he is 12 years old, he will freak out that just the ideas in them dying. So the younger they are, usually there's more tension just to the story. And, and, in, and again, in general, horror, that is what it does. Alien, I will challenge you to name other movies that are pure horror, where the cast is in their 50s. You know, there's not, there's not many. It's, it's just really hard to do. That's what really Scott pulled that miracle with Alien. But in general, it's not, the, it's not how you do it. There's usually younger people, even The Exorcist, but the other day, the girl is very young, and there's always someone really young. Alien is one of those rare, rare exceptions where the cast is, 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 is older. But I felt like the, what I've done and what I've done in my movies usually have a younger cast. I felt made sense. I felt I, I wanted to see always my fantasy of what would have happened if Newt and her friends would have grew up in the colony. What would have happened when they're in their 20s? Are they going to stay there and do exactly what their parents did, like with no future, no life? I was always fascinated by those characters. Imagine what would happen if they grow and what, what, what would they do when they're in their 20s? And I was guaranteed sure that we were going to try to get out of there. <laughs> so, so I always knew where my story started at least. Brilliant. Thank you so much, and congratulations Thank on the you, film, man. and Pleasure welcome to, to my crazy suburban trauma. <laughs> cool. I'll, just, uh, yeah, I'll enjoy this afternoon. It's my first time here. So.